is the United States planning to complete the job which the ECOWAS military couldn't complete by attacking Niger when Niger ousted their Western puppet leader? Any time the United States plans to attack nations with resources to enable them exploit their resources, they cook up the terrorist mantra, provide evidence based on false claims, and then attack the country. Iraq, Libya, and Syria come to mind. Hello and welcome again to the Edge Politics Podcast. Geopolitical Queen here with today's episode on how war-mongering and global regime changer United States is so concerned about the security of countries like Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger when its citizens are homeless, sleeping under bridges and in cars in its own home. The United States, yes, we know them. The ever-violent, psychopathic, narcissistic, anti-peace, bullying nation is at it again. This time around, according to the Wall Street Journal, it is seeking to deploy unarmed reconnaissance military drones to airfields in several Western African countries to fight the alleged spread of terrorist groups in the region. Yeah, right. They had a good excuse, didn't they? The terrorists, they created themselves after attacking Iraq and Libya. The reason for all this, as Washington claims, is their belief that Mali and Burkina Faso are so inundated with Islamist militants that they are beyond the reach of the Western help. And Niger is also no longer a reliable ally of the U.S. after July's military takeover. So how does the U.S. envisage implementing this next chaos in Africa? They are in preliminary talks with countries like Ghana, Côte d'Ivoire and Benin to use their airfields to house U.S. unarmed reconnaissance drones to stop the spread of their imaginative Al-Qaeda and the Daesh terrorist groups. According to the orchestrator and mother of all chaos U.S., the said countries and Togo are now in danger posed by Islamist militants surging south from Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger. Says who? The United States has got serious security problems at its own borders to Mexico. But that is not their problem. They have to protect Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger. Who actually invited them? Just note how they do it. They start with a pretext of some looming danger in these countries. And then they continue drumming their mainstream media. And after the lies are repeated several times, some vulnerable ones believe it as truth. Then they take advantage of the ignorance of the masses 
to pretend to step in to protect the people and bring peace. But can anyone tell us where in this world, in the history of the U.S., that the U.S. ever brought peace apart from regime change, chaos, and wars to anywhere it went? Let's have a look at the Middle East. The United States managed to knock the heads of Saudi Arabia and Iran together, making them feel like they are enemies, when in reality, only the United States was the enemy. There was no enemy there until they managed to create enemies there amongst themselves so they could stare in the middle and exploit their oil. The drones, according to the U.S., would allow their forces to carry out their aerial surveillance of militant movements along the coast and provide over-the-shoulder tactical and combat advice to local troops during operations. According to retired Air Force Major General Mark Hicks, a former commander of the U.S. Special Operation Troops in Africa, there is really not much option other than, than to fall back and operate out of the coastal West African states. The cooked up allegation from Washington and some local officials is that terrorist groups are seeking to expand their reach south into countries that produce a wealth of gold and cocoa. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Are you seeing the underlying main reasons why they want to go to Africa? Which nation appealed to the U.S. to protect them of their gold and cocoa in Africa? Unfortunately, a senior Benin military officer was cited by Sputnik Russia as saying that Benin has no objection to Washington's use of its airfield, but only needs to work out the details if they receive a formal American request. In his little naive mind, Benin would benefit from a high-end drone fleet without incurring the cost of buying the equipment itself. Just how low and pitiful can some be in these modern times? Of all the problems in Africa, the least of them is the U.S. protecting gold and cocoa in Africa. The U.S. was in Asia. Here are people who don't even have streets. They couldn't help them to build streets, but they want to help them to protect their security. Security from who? When of all the problems in Africa, the least of them is the U.S. protecting gold and cocoa in Africa. Talk of security in Africa. What does the United States care about the security of people in Africa? Does it even care about the security of its own citizens? Some of us are really asking, when will the U.S. ever think of supporting African nations in implementing infrastructures that could help the nations to develop? The only thing the United States has to offer any nation is steel, steel, and steel. And if a country refuses to allow them to steal their resources, then the nation has to get ready to be bombed in the name of terrorists. 
The United States is busy building military bases everywhere in Africa. But you will never find the military, the United States, building even a little, a four square, one meter by one meter um, factory to install equipment in Africa to create jobs for the youth. What is just wrong with this nation? We may ask, why is the United States concerned, especially about Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger? When did the United States realize that they could protect these three countries? So what do you think? Is the U.S. planning to complete the job, which the ECOWAS military couldn't complete by attacking Niger somewhere in July when they ousted their Western puppet leader? All these countries really need protection from the U.S. Well, kindly leave your comments in the comment section below. And thanks for tuning in. I will be back with the next broadcast. Happy New Year and good day.